Sean Combs, the music mogul recently inundated with a wave of sexual assault and sex trafficking allegations and lawsuits, is now the focus of federal law enforcement after it comes out multiple properties associated with the rapper have been raided by federal agents. Former FBI and CIA agent Tracy Walder breaks down what these raids could mean for the rapper and music executive. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. He is a man of many names. Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy. His legal name, Sean Combs. You know who I'm talking about. The rapper, producer, entertainment icon, reported billionaire. He has been in the spotlight a lot over the last few months, and I will tell you, not in a good way. And now he is in the news in a shocking development. Federal agents have raided homes, properties associated with the rapper in Miami and Los Angeles. This is reportedly pursuant to search warrants from the Southern District of New York. A Homeland Security investigation spokesperson told ABC News on Monday, quote, earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, that's Homeland Security, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. According to NBC News, a source indicated that federal authorities have interviewed three women and one man in New York in connection to allegations of human trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms, and that interviews with other individuals are also planned. Now, to be very clear, we don't know whether Combs is the target of this trafficking investigation, what his connection is in any way. And we also can't confirm to you at the time of this recording if Diddy has been detained or arrested, if he's even in the country. There are videos that have circulated online about him being at the Miami airport while this was going on. Reporting also indicates his jet may have left the country. Some reporting indicating the jet is possibly in the Caribbean. We just don't know. And I will tell you, at the time of this recording, no criminal charges have been filed in connection with this investigation. As far as we know, Uh, what we do know, or what I should say our sidebar viewers and listeners will know, is that this development may not be that much of a surprise. Why do I say that? Because we dedicated several shows to the recent lawsuits against Diddy, his family, associates, companies for allegations of sex trafficking, sexual abuse, harassment, allegations of firearm possession, a shooting, drugs. Now, to be clear, While we talk about these lawsuits today, we do not know if they are in any way connected to this investigation, but we do clearly have a lot to get into. So with that, without further ado, let me bring in right now Tracy Walder, former CIA and FBI agent, national security contributor for News Nation, author of The Unexpected Spy, was with me last night as I was hosting Dan Abrams Live talking about this. Tracy, good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning, Jesse. Thank you for having me. All right, your overall thoughts on this raid. What a development this is. You know, it's it is quite a development, but you know, just like you mentioned before, I'm not necessarily surprised that it happened because there has been so much in regards to civil cases. Now, I realize that civil those civil cases are going to have no bearing um, on this the raids that occurred. I understand that, but at the same time, in my opinion, where there's smoke, there's fire, and a lot of these civil cases probably have criminal merit um, at some point. And so I am not necessarily surprised that this happened, but what will surprise me, and I think might surprise some people, is the sheer volume and connection of any kind of sex trafficking ring that he allegedly may have been running. I think that is what is going to come probably as the most surprising to folks, how in-depth something like this was, how long something like this may have gone on for, and how many people were involved. Typically, HSI really looks at sex trafficking in regards to minors. And so that's another layer to this as well that I think is probably the surprising component. And I I mean, last night, a lot of people were making comparisons. Oh, he's the Jeffrey Epstein of the hip hop world. Now, again, he hasn't been charged. um, And even if he is charged, he'll be innocent until proven guilty. Having said that, I'm reading through these lawsuits, and I remember one of his associates was compared to being the Ghislaine Maxwell of this situation. So there are these kinds of connections that people are making. We'll get into it a little bit more. But going back to the raid, why do you think it happened when it happened, right? 
It's not just because it was a sunny day in Los Angeles and Miami. The timing of this, I have to feel, is very strategic. Look, you're absolutely right. Yes, it was actually a beautiful day um, on both coasts, quite frankly, to conduct this raid. Um, I've participated in several raids during my time with the FBI, and that's actually not uncommon, particularly in federal type of crimes, which is what we're looking at here. Crimes that are going to cross state borders. You the key in something like this in a nonviolent crime is to the preservation of evidence. That's what is so important here. And that is why I believe this this was done at exactly the same time. It's actually not unusual. It's something that is done. And sometimes it's less about capturing the person and more about ensuring that evidence is still there. Evidence has not been destroyed and we can get as much as possible. Would that mean they had some sort of knowledge or some sort of belief that evidence was about to be destroyed at that moment? You know, and I I struggle to make this comparison, so hopefully people won't be frustrated, but this is actually similar what we saw with former President Trump at Mar-a-Lago in that they had some indication that evidence was in the process of perhaps being destroyed or was potentially going to be destroyed. And so what I think is in this case, they may have not had an indication, excuse me, that evidence was being moved, was being destroyed. Participants were moving around and trying to you know, squirrel away evidence. And so yes, sometimes you have to act under a sense of urgency. I don't know in terms of a criminal case, you know, what's being built against Diddy, as you mentioned, he is currently at the taping of this show not under any criminal charges, Um, but it's probably correct to assume that evidence was perhaps going to be destroyed imminently. And I know there was reporting to indicate that certain um, items were removed from the house. That's what was observed yesterday or removed from the properties. I am reminded of something from one of the lawsuits, one of the recent lawsuits that we covered here on Sidebar. It was filed by a producer of Diddy's former producer, Little Rod Jones. This was for sexual assault, harassment, really disturbing allegations. But Jones alleged that Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes and these secret recordings of celebrities and associates that he says has, quote, compromising footage of every person that has attended his party. So I, I, the first thing that I thought of yesterday, what could they be looking for potentially if this is a sex trafficking investigation um, is whether there's videotapes and the camera system, right? Right. And so I think and I was going to mention this digital evidence is key. Obviously, right. in this at this point in time, it's really easy to destroy digital evidence. It's not something that's difficult to do, which is why they went in there um, and went in there simultaneously. You know, again, you made the comparison to Epstein. I think, you know, Epstein, he was also recording and also had secret cameras really throughout all of his homes, private planes, all of that. And, you know, his client list was more about politicians. Here, I think what we're going to see are clients involved in the uh, entertainment business or pop culture, if you will. And so I do think um, right now this is going to be a huge web that they're going to have to untangle. And I'm expecting it's going to take quite some time to go through all of that digital evidence because I fully expect that he had cameras in other locations as well. It's my understanding that those aren't just his two sole places of residence and where he spends time. So I suspect there will be more digital evidence. And by the way, before we get into the substance of any of these lawsuits, um, if Diddy left the country, right, Uh, if the reporting is indicated that he fled or left, um, that would signify to me she was tipped off, right? I mean, anytime you have somebody, and again, we don't know if he was detained. We don't know if he was arrested. I would think not. Wouldn't that information have come out? Um, Because a part of me thought that he might have been detained, put in one of those transport vehicles, maybe brought in. We just didn't know about it. I I imagine we might know about it today. Maybe not. I'll ask you. But also, if he had left the country, um, that means someone tipped him off. And I think that would be of a concern, right? Oh, of course, that would be of concern. I was looking at the flight log um, of, I believe he has a Gulf Stream. Yeah. Um, it looks to me like that plane landed in Antigua in at about 9 a.m. So actually, yeah. that would have been before 
this raid occurred, right? So then you would have a difficult time saying, you know, he was leaving because of the raid. And we don't know if he's on it. We don't know if he's on the plane right? or what the deal is. You don't yeah. know who the passengers are on the plane. You just know that it's traveling somewhere. Well, a lot of people have private planes and they use them for things other than when they are on them, right? And so we also know too that he was at the Miami airport. There was footage of him kind of seen pacing on the phone. I believe that if they had a specific warrant for him, but again, this is just me speculating. Sure. I believe if they had a specific warrant for him, they would have probably arrested him at that point in time. I'm not saying that an arrest isn't going to be forthcoming, but I truly believe, and I said this last night when I was speaking with you, that the execution of these warrants was really about the preservation of evidence um, and less about arresting him. I suspect that may come at a later time. Hey, we're going to get back to this Diddy discussion in a minute. Crazy development. But I have to highlight one of our incredible partners here on Sidebar. I love talking about them. Morgan and Morgan, the sponsor of this video, America's largest injury law firm. Look, getting injured is a scary thing. And it is so important to know what your legal rights are and whether you could be compensated for what happened to you. And Morgan and Morgan, they make that process so simple for their clients. You submit your claim, you upload documents, you sign contracts, you talk to your whole legal team, all from your smartphone. That's it. An attorney from their firm will review your case in eight clicks or less. And by the way, they're big for a reason. They win a lot. They aren't afraid to take a case to trial if it's necessary. They're all about fighting for the compensation you deserve. And I'm talking verdicts, recent verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philadelphia. These are higher, by the way, than the highest insurance offers in these cases. And when you think about insurance companies, they sometimes lowball offers. You need a big firm to take these big companies on. Oh, and I should tell you, there's no upfront fee with Morgan & Morgan. Yeah, you only pay them if you win. Nice little kicker right there. So if you're injured, you can start by easily submitting a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your phone. Why the manpower? And the reason I, I, I'm going to take a guess, I'm going to take a stab at this, is because I go back to what I read in the lawsuits. Again, the lawsuits are lawsuits. They're allegations. But his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, Cassie Ventura, she filed a lawsuit against him in November of 2023. She ended up settling. But she accused Diddy of not only physically and sexually abusing her, for, allegedly for, forcing her into sexual slavery and sex trafficking, but she claimed that he beat her forced her to have sex with prostitutes on video while he watched and masturbated, but also forced her to carry a gun for him. She also alleged that Combs blew up rapper Kid Cudi's car because he found out that Cudi was romantically interested in Ventura. Then, in one of the latest lawsuits that I mentioned from Little Rod Jones, Jones brings up this event, a shooting that happened at Chalice Record Studios out in uh, Los Angeles, where apparently he says there was a heated fight between Combs, his son, Justin, who was actually handcuffed yesterday, or the reporting indicates he was handcuffed, and Justin's friend identified as G. Gunshots rang out. G was lying on the ground with blood coming out of his leg and hip area. Combs allegedly told his team to tell police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. And then Jones, in the lawsuit, provided screenshots of the bloodstained bathroom where he claims G was shot by either Combs or his son and claims he still has the clothing for evidence. Now, again, I say all that to believe if they think that they're entering into a violent environment, right? Let me go back a little bit. They, they yeah. absolutely would have every reason to believe that they are going into a violent environment. And, you know, really, Diddy's history with violence and firearms goes back pretty far, even into the time when he was dating Jennifer Lopez. Right. Um, there were, um, you know, that had occurred as well. I believe it was at a nightclub. There was a shooting there as well that he was involved in, although it could be incorrect. No, no, so, no. I, and by the way, in one of the latest lawsuits, that is brought up. And basically right. the allegation was that, uh, Diddy was involved in that shooting, but had right. someone cover for him. Cover for him. Yeah. And that's how I had recalled that as well. And so they had every reason to believe at the FBI. And again, FBI is not HSI, but they operate the same in terms of how they're executing warrants and things of that nature. If you believe you're going into a hostile environment, you are going to bring your special teams with you, whether that's a SWAT team, those kinds of things, they are going to come with you. And so the fact that his sons were handcuffed, and I know there was a lot of discussion about that, about how it wasn't fair, that's actually very proper procedure, and that's to ensure the safety of everyone. Um, his sons are adults. Uh, they are known to have weapons. They may not 
have been arrested, but handcuffing them until you are sure that the home is secure and all weapons are secure is actually a very valid and very normal thing to do. Additionally, so you have that with the, with the history of violence and weapons, there's no question. But then you also have teams that have to go in there and process all of that digital evidence that we just talked about. So you have these massive SWAT and tactical teams going in to disarm, and then you also have agents going in there to collect evidence. So that, that is why this is such a large group of people. Also, you know, Jesse, I'm, I'm from LA. This, this area in Homeby Hills, where one of his homes were, is massive. So you need a lot of agents to cover that the entirety of that area. So it's, it's actually not surprising. And we actually don't know. I mean, I saw reporting that it might actually be associated with the Bad Boy Films production. Like that might right. be the home. So again, maybe it's I don't know if it's personal residence or it's one of his company's properties. I agree. That's what I had saw as well. Is yeah. that maybe the registered owner is is that? That's difficult, right? Because the reality is, is he owns that production company. Sure. sure. Yes. So, of course. Yeah. You know, and so um, the reality is, is that it's still associated with him right. as he is the owner of that company so look it may not be his primary residence i have no idea um obviously but at the same time it is a company that is known and documented to be associated with him and his sons were there and let's talk about the sons justin and king combs um so we saw this video what appeared to be them in handcuffs um i said it yesterday on on um when i was seeing this and i you said it too not necessarily they are arrested and charged with a crime, uh, but they could be just detained while the search is happening. Now, I say that, but again, the first thing that I thought was the little Rod Jones lawsuit. And one of the things he talks about how it was how and he alleges that this past summer, July 2nd, 2023, out in California, claims that Combs had a party with underage girls and sex workers at his home and his son and an unidentified R&B artist were there. Quote, he is a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bahan billionaire. Now, again, embedded in that lawsuit are screenshots of a video taken of this party where it allegedly shows Combs either kissing or dancing almost face-to-face with a purported underage girl. So many times in this latest lawsuit, his son is implicated in this alleged wrongdoing. I believe, just like I do believe that charges for Diddy are forthcoming, I believe that charges for his sons most likely are as well. Now, given the raid and when it occurred, if they were in illegal possession of firearms based on California gun laws, then they could have probably taken them into custody right then and there for obvious reasons. I don't think that that's what they're going to do. I suspect that they were simply detained for the duration of the search and then they were let go. But again, I, I'm simply hypothesizing here, but I do think at this point, if his sons had been arrested and formally booked, we would know probably at this point based right. on public access to those documents. And we don't know that information. And so I just assume that for the safety of everyone there, they were physically detained during the duration of the search, which again, is very normal procedure in, in something like this. There obviously been a lot of reaction and a lot of response to that, including in the celebrity route. I mean, 50 Cent posted on uh, Instagram about the raids. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Speaking of that, so if we think about the possibility of a sex trafficking investigation, sex trafficking related charges, if we go to December 2023, uh, there was a woman who accused Combs and former Bad Boy Entertainment president Harvey Pierre uh, and another person of sex trafficking and gang raping her when she was 17 years old. Um, there was a Jane Doe who says that she was flown from Michigan to New York City, supplied with drugs and alcohol, and then assaulted by all three men at Combs' recording studios. Now, Combs, by the way, has always denied the allegations. And in fact, in response to one lawsuit, uh, had posted, I believe it was on Instagram, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I've sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy, sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do 
And he goes on to say, did not do this. Now, uh, again, that was in relation to a lot of these lawsuits being filed. But when we're talking about sex trafficking, Tracy, and we're talking about the Southern District of New York possibly in initiating this search warrant, where does your mind go in terms of what we might be looking at in terms of potential charges, potential allegations, uh, and how it's connected to New York? So I absolutely believe, and again, simply my hypothesis, he is innocent until proven guilty that he will be um, arrested and well, indicted on sex trafficking charges. I have no doubt um, about that. And I do believe that he was most likely the kingpin um, of this. These girls, what that tells me, if it's out of the Southern District of New York, is this is spanning multiple states um, and that he is trafficking or allegedly trafficking girls um, across multiple states across the United States. This isn't just an isolated incident um, in one location. And so I have heard um, things as well about his Hamptons parties and things happening in those Hamptons parties as well. So I suspect um, more evidence may come out as a result of that. But these are extremely serious uh, charges. And part of me to is frustrated um, by somewhat the complacency, right, of the entertainment industry as a whole um, in this. Uh, and I think sometimes people fly under the radar for a long time, like Epstein did as well, um, because people are scared. Uh, people want to still climb the ranks. And we're doing it all the while sort of sacrificing the safety of these, these young victims or girls that are involved in this. And that is deeply troubling. Before we get into more of this, I, I, I hear you, and, and I, I think, you know, it's really, really frightening to think about. I mean, I read all these allegations and the lawsuits, and I was, I've never heard anything like it. Um, and obviously, we don't know exactly where this investigation is going. But if Combs is charged with federal crimes here, but he's not in the country, and he's actually in a country uh, or a jurisdiction where there's no extradition agreement, how do you get him back? How, what do federal authorities do? That's a really good question. And I looked up just because I was curious actually about it. Yeah. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Some I do, some I don't. Um, but we do have an extradition treaty with them. Um, right now, though, because of the public nature of this, I have a very hard time believing that a country would allow his plane to land with him on it in their country. They don't have to let him land if they don't want to. And so I think that it would be very difficult for him to be able to land in an inhospitable country simply because they don't want him. We do have extradition treaties with more countries than I think people would think. And typically they will send folks back to us as long as we take the death penalty off of the table. And I don't believe that this is a death penalty case. It's Southern District of New York. And so I believe that whether we have an extradition treaty or not with whatever country he may or may not go to, um, they will send him back. And talk to me about what you think they have in terms of a case, because, right, you, you say they want to preserve the evidence for a potential uh, uh, prosecution against either him or someone else. There's a criminal case building. But they had to have probable cause for the search warrant uh, to be issued. And I wonder, you know, I mentioned some of the interviews. They wouldn't have had enough to just to try to arrest him first and then do the raid, or they need the raid first to see what's at the property before they can build a case and build charges and then arrest him. Talk to me about the timeline of how this typically works in terms of if we're seeing a, a raid on several properties, does that in conjunction with an arrest? Does that come before an arrest? Uh, does that, you know, how does it typically work? Typically, Jesse, it's in conjunction with an arrest. But I started thinking about this a little bit more last night, and I was was thinking that if he has videos and or his associates have videos, and they are attempting to distribute those of young male children or female children, that means that a child is in imminent danger. Mm -hmm. And so part of me wonders if this was done to stop that um, and that they will get to the arrest obviously at some point um, because you know as you mentioned typically these these warrants are served and there's usually an indictment that goes you know hand in hand with that at the same time so in my opinion it's not unheard of it's just a little bit unusual we don't typically right. see this anytime we did raids um, at the FBI of, of this nature we ha also had an arrest warrant uh, for the individual as well and so 
it is unusual, but I don't want to say it's unheard of. And again, I'm just speculating, but part of me wonders if this was still actively being distributed. Um, and if it is, they need to shut that down immediately. Um, were you surprised at the response that we saw from Douglas Wigdorf? This is a lawyer for Cassie Ventura and one of the Jane Doe's in response to reports of this search warrant that was issued on Sean Combs. Now, remember, Cassie Ventura settled with Sean Combs, but the statement says, quote, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Now, again, in light of that settlement, settlement doesn't necessarily mean you're saying Combs is completely innocent. It's you've agreed to resolve the issue. Um, doesn't you know absolve him of wrongdoing, but to make that statement, I think that's something to be said. Now, again, of course, he's representing someone else that's continually uh, suing uh, Sean Combs. But again, that that statement I thought was really interesting. What was your take on it? Yeah, I thought that that statement was interesting. Um, my my question about it, though, is did he tip them off? Did he provide them with information? Um, you know, did Cassie Ventura or any of these individuals involved in these civil suits also provide evidence along with that to build this criminal case? Because obviously those two things are separate. So in my opinion, in listening to that statement, it actually sounds like maybe they did. Um, and, you know, that's incredible that they did that um, because, I believe that Cassie Venture was absolutely a victim of pretty horrific uh, things. And if she was able to document all of that and provide evidence, then that absolutely would go to building his criminal case. It's just, it's so crazy to think about this. I mean, it, it's, it, again, and I'm not surprised by that connection to New York because I go back to little Rod Jones and he said he was assaulted at different places, including uh, in New York. Um, so again, what can we expect next to happen uh, as this story develops? And I imagine it's going to develop quite rapidly. I agree with you. I think it's going to develop quite rapidly as well. I think the next thing that will happen is an indictment of P. Diddy. Um, that, that's what I think, and that he will be taken into custody hopefully soon um, at some point. But honestly, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. This is, like I said, a little yeah. bit unusual um, and that there isn't an indictment yet, although I think one may be forthcoming. What about other individuals? Because remember, uh, going back to one of the lawsuits, uh, there was an allegation that was, there were violations of the TVPA, the Trafficking and Victims Protection Act, big law aimed at fighting against domestic and international human slavery. And uh, it was a, they, they were filing a, a civil action with respect to it. But um, you're basically saying these minors are engaging in commercial sex acts. Um, I would imagine that if this is a really big operation, we could potentially see uh, arrests of other individuals connected to uh, the rapper, right? I agree. I think um, we will probably see the arrest of one or both of his sons because I, I believe that they, based on evidence in cases that we've seen in the past from civil perspective, they have been allegedly involved in this. But at the same time, too, um, I think that there may be a lot of people who have associated with him um, in his circle that are probably scared right now um, because they may have had some involvement in this as well. And so in my opinion, I think they will start at the top, obviously arresting Diddy um, or his sons. And from there, in my opinion, they may try to plea. I don't think he's going to completely avoid jail time or anything like right. that if he's indicted, but maybe they will try to plea to get names of other individuals that are associated with this. But again, Completely my hypothesis, Jesse. And and I'll leave on this. There was reporting, there was an allegation that Combs may have been allegedly harassing Mr. Jones uh, because of that lawsuit that he filed. Um, Jones alleges that Combs sent agents to intimidate his eight-year-old daughter and the mother mm -hmm. of his child and his ex-wives. So you talk about the imminence of this raid. You talk about the manpower put forward by this raid. Um, if that is true, uh, and again, we don't know if it's connected to the lawsuit in any way, but that's something else to think about, right? 100%. He has a pretty long documented history of threatening individuals and asking them to, I guess, clean up his mess or clean up his dirty work, if you will. And so that is not at all uh, surprising to me. And I do assume uh, that individuals who may have been involved in speaking out or testifying in any of these civil cases may also be awarded uh, some type of security and protection as well. 
Tracy Walder, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Jesse. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.